People do the best they can with what they know. Sometimes the lessons they've learned or the experiences they've had can mold them into someone who's not good for you. Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me here today. If you're new, I'm Amanda. Welcome to the channel where we are all about shattering the mental health stigma. If you haven't already, please make sure you make sweet, sweet love to that subscribe button. Give the bell a few kisses so you're not missing any of this content designed to help you with your mental health or help you help someone else. Today, I'm going to be reacting to, or actually more analyzing, Crawling by Linkin Park. This is not my first time having heard this song, not by a long shot, but Linkin Park really helped me through a lot of dark times in my life. They even saved my life. And today marks five years since we tragically lost the lead singer, Chester Bennington, to suicide. And Chester, his legacy inspired my work, inspired my outreach, inspired this channel, this community. So I wanted to do something to honor him. So I'm going to be sharing my favorite Linkin Park song, Crawling. And I will say that I don't share Linkin Park songs with people if I don't feel connection. And I really do feel connection to this community. It used to be, I wouldn't even share Linkin Park songs with my really close friends when I was a teenager. I listened completely by myself. It was just, I'd hold myself up in my room and listen. But I am sharing this with you in Chester's honor because I think the message helps a lot of people. So Crawling by Linkin Park. But when I have an emotional dysregulation episode, I can feel a literal burning sensation under my skin. And it feels like it's attached to a caffeinated, slithering snake. It's incredibly horrifying. It's incredibly scary and uncomfortable. But of course, a pull from beneath the surface is more of a personification of the shadow uh, that perpetuates our bleak outlook on life and that if left unregulated to run helter-skelter acts as a really bad influence and tells us to stay in situations that we know aren't good for us or encourages us to engage in destructive behavior. Time can't heal a wound that is constantly being reopened, be it through repeated exposure to trauma or a self-inflicted lifestyle that is infecting said wound. Fear is what keeps you tethered to a toxic, the toxic attitudes um, because it paralyzes you. It absolutely paralyzes you from acting in any way that would break the cycle, that would break the habit. Uh, but you lose your fortitude to set boundaries, to really set boundaries and stand up for yourself or try to heal because you're consumed by a world internally and externally that's convinced you that it's dark and flawed perspective is real and that you have no power. It's a confidence, I'm convinced that there's just too much pressure to take. I've felt this way before, so insecure. Me, 
my will, I stand beside my own reflection. It's haunting how I can't seem to find myself again. My walls are closing in. Without a sense of confidence, I'm convinced that there's just too much pressure to take. I felt this way before. So first time I ever heard that, I had no idea what he was saying, the so insecure part. And so I was just making up nonsensical words in my head. Oh, I miss Chester so much. And I'm so grateful that we have his music to connect to because he has such a compelling and dominating energy to him and no one is ever going to replace Chester. The confusion comes into play as a result of a very particular vicious cycle. Every now and then, flickers will, will get through to you that a change needs to happen, right? And that you need to get out of a situation and that you need to do something differently. Every now and then, there'll be a little breakthrough of that in your mind, but you can't muster the energy or the confidence to follow through with the necessary actions to bring it into fruition. And confidence is the primary target of abusers, be it the ones in your head or the ones on the outside like this, because they can't manipulate you if you maintain a strong sense of worth and value. It's almost like it seems unreal to her, like her reflection doesn't even seem real to her. She's so used to seeing this other version of herself. And I like to think that she sent those flowers to herself as a symbol of self-love and of, of showing herself that she's worthy and she doesn't need anyone else. That's what I always like to imagine. This song is what seduced me into their world in my teenage years many, many moons ago. And let me tell you, it was such a challenge to not sing along and scream to every single word of the song or, you know, Chester screams. I aggressively whisper in, in, in my own way, right? I'm aggressively whispering while he's screaming his heart out. But there was one line that really implanted itself or that really planted itself in my memory. And it was watered by my own experiences. And that is against my will, I stand beside my own reflection. First of all, because years of bullying and belittling that I went through uh, in my academic career had stripped me of even a shard of belief that I was anything but this hideous monster that was only worthy of exile. And to be honest, I hated myself. I hated myself in every single way. Secondly, because reflecting really truly looking at yourself forces you to admit to the voluntary back steps that might have led you to your really unfortunate circumstances. And that's not to say that it's your fault that you are going through depression or that you're being abused. None of that is your fault, but there might have been things, even if that was just ignoring the red flags of someone's personality that might have led you there. And then once you can reflect on that and you can look at that 
And you can also, in tangent with that, see your own worth. You can prevent yourself from just getting into relationship after relationship or situation after situation of the same thing, just with a different name or face. So it's important that we can see our own reflection and be able to utilize that information to grow. I, lo have, I always loved, the very first time I ever saw this video, I just remember her smiling at the end and thinking that might be the first smile that she's ever cracked and it just warmed my soul even as a teenager to see her face light up and her whole demeanor change because she deserves that just like every other survivor. So I hope that I did Chester's memory and honor today. I hope that I make him proud because like I said, that is what this, this community is all about. It's shattering the mental health stigma so we can prevent future suicides. So good, bad, and crazy. Share your mental health stories here in the comments. That is how we shatter the stigma. That is how we move forward is just by being open. So when people feel comfortable to talk about their struggles, they don't feel like they're, they're going through this alone and it makes them more likely to reach out and get the help they need before things get too dark. Give this video a thumbs up, share it. You never know who might need to see it. And Chester, I hope that you have found peace out there somewhere. And if any of you are needing help or support, you can reach out to me through the comments, through my email. I also always link the suicide hotlines by country here in the descriptions of the videos. You're never ever alone. I care if your light goes out and so many other people do as well. I love you so much. Mwah.